We present this video explaining the physical examination of the abdomen, a fundamental method of indifferential diagnosis of the acute surgical abdomen, due to, for example, to processes such as acute appendicitis, intestinal perforations, acute cholecystitis, mesenteric necrosis, and other less frequent conditions. As a prerequisite to the physical examination of the abdomen, we must first carry out an adequate amnesis of the patient. We must ask him about the condition that brings him to the consultation and especially about the abdominal areas that bother him or hurt him the most. These areas will be the last which we will explore. An adequate emptying of the urinary bladder is also essential to avoid confusing the bladder with abdominal cysts or other types of abdominal tumors. Also essential is the explanation of the maneuvers that we will perform on the patient, because in this way we will gain their confidence and promote an intense relaxation of abdominal wall muscles. We start the exploratory methodology with the inspection, which we will do with the patient standing up, the auscultation, percussion and superficial and deep palpation. It's organized in this way, the auscultation prior to the palpation and percussion, to avoid generating abnormal noises that may confuse the picture that the patient brings therefore we start with inspection auscultation percussion and palpation we begin therefore the abdomination examination with inspection we ask the patient to breathe in and out slowly again Again, with open mouth. Vale. De acuerdo. Perfecto. Perfecto. Nos fijamos. With the patient standing, we look at the central position of the navel. The presence or not of the asymmetries, the presence or not of scars, which may be surgical or traumatic, and the presence of vascular phenomena such as spider bands. We also inspect the back. The characteristics of the spine and the presence of the asymmetries or scars. The next phase of the physical examination of the abdomen is auscultation, which we will perform with the patients in the supine position. We can employ a pillow or knee level to further facilitate the relaxation of the abdomen. Auscultation of air fluid sounds begin with the left iliac fossa and ascends counterclockwise first to the left vacuum. Left hypochondrium, epigastric area, right hypochondrium, right vacuum, right iliac fossa, and periumbilical region. First, we note the murmurs and their frequency and start the vascular auscultation. We begin vascular auscultation with abdominal aorta, searching for possible aortic murmurs in the midline from epigastric zone downwards. We can do it with the membrane part, but it's preferable to do it with the backwards part, with the bell part. The 
We finished the exploration in infra umbilical zone. Auscultation of the renal arteries is performed by imagining the transverse line at the height of two centimeters above the navel. And we stop the intersection of this line with the costal line. This point is the sharpest focus for renal murmurs. Auscultation on the left and right sides. The auscultation of the iliac arteries will be performed in a bleak line from the umbilical area to the anterior superior iliac spines. The femoral artery murmurs are explored in the ingual folds. La realizamos en los pliegues inguinales, en la zona inguinal, tanto derecha on both the right and the left sides. como izquierda, fundamentalmente digo en la zona inguinal, la auscultación de las arterias femorales. También podemos hacer la auscultación... In addition, auscultation of the mesenteric arteries will be carried out more diffusely in the periumbilical areas. We place the whole hand, including the palm, on the patient's abdomen and start fingertip percussion, giving sharp blows on the phalanges of the left hand with the index and the middle finger of the right hand. We will start on the left. It is in this area, a tympanic percussion. That is, we are percutting aerial areas with the presence of gas inside viscera. We continue to the epigastric region. We also percuss the lung bases left. which will be tympanic. And we continue exploration towards the right hypochondrium. Up to the right costal margin. Right void. Right iliac fossa and periumbilical region. We then proceed to the percussion of the hepatic region, where we can verify that the percussion will be on the solid region. Therefore, made, which we will continue from the pulmonary tympanism. And imaginary line is located at the liver upper border, through which we pass from pulmonary tympanism to hepatic dullness. It helps us to delimit the upper border of the liver. We will subsequently perform the posterior percussion, which we call fist percussion, which helps us to assess the renal system. We will start in the area, renal area, and descend along the retral path, both on the right and on the left sides. We will perform percussion in the right lateral region of the appendicular area, especially useful in the retrocecal appendicitis. Retrocecal. 
Dentro de la palpación hablamos para... In palpation we will uh, first perform superficial palpation of the abdominal wall. Then the deep one. Supone utilizar Superficial palpation can be monomanual or bimanual. Y entonces voy realizando una We will support the whole hand and carry out the palpation of no more than two centimeters deep through the abdomen so that we can try to see painful points on the wall or tumor areas. If the patient reports pain or notices tumors at a given moment, we will perform the Smith and Bates maneuver. We will maintain palpation at that point and ask the patient to sit up slightly and ask him if it hurts more when squeezing or releasing. If it hurts more when uh, squeezing, it usually indicates a muscle tear in the superficial region of the abdomen. If the pain goes away with squeezing, it is usually a deep pain. We can apply the same maneuver by lifting the two lower limbs to achieve a contraction of the abdominal wall in the same way. Superficial abdominal palpation can also be done uh, manually with the index fingers in the same way as uh, monomanual but covering a larger skin area. The same maneuver we cover a larger skin area. Igualmente podemos realizar la palpación superficial, mono manual o bimanual. Deep palpation, uh, usually it will always be bimanual. We separate hands by attached indexes using both indexes. It is essential to follow the respiratory movement of the patient. That is, when the patient is inhaling, the diaphragm descends and the viscera descends, making the palpation difficult. Therefore, we will wait for expiration when the, we can perform the deep palpation we need. In fact, with this maneuver, we can check the skin and continue with the palpation towards the midline. Bimanual palpation with uh, attached indices. Palpation with overlapping hands, in which we be being right-handed, we will uh, now use the right hand on the bottom and the left hand on the top. The lower hand is the one that is going to feel and the upper one is going to help us to push. The deep palpation in this case will be performed in the same way, taking into account the respiratory movement of the patient. In this way, we can palpate the entire colon and even, in some patients, the aortic area. We continue counterclockwise, palpating the left void and left hypochondrium, and moving towards the epigastric area. Esperamos, pulsen. Zona ya epigástrica. Vuelvo a tomar aire. Pulse. Vale. Tome aire de nuevo. Pulse. Tome aire. 
siempre iniciamos las pruebas. We always start the palpation in the area opposite to the side where the pain refers. In deep palpation, a series of specific maneuvers are indicated in diagnosis, uh, some processes that can occur with the peritonitis. Especialmente indicadas en el diagnóstico diferencial de las peritonitis agudas. La primera de ellas es... The first of these, and the most important, is the Blomberg maneuver. La cual... We will uh, warn the patient that we will uh, carry out deep palpation and that uh, at the particular moment we will uh, release the hands. The patient will have to tell us uh, when it hurts the most, when we perform the deep palpation or on release. Peritoneal irritation, as a general rule, will hurt more when releasing than when squeezing. It is uh, what we know as the positive blumber sign. Y ahora suelto. ¿Cuándo lo doy más? Al, al expulsar. Al levantar. Al levantar. Bien. En principio. En principio. Let us imagine that the patient had uh, acute appendicitis. We will start in the right iliac fossa, wait for expiratory phase, and proceed to go deeper. Release, and then the patient will tell us if it hurts more when squeezing or releasing. Tome aire. Esperamos a la fase expiratoria, expulse, y ahora profundizamos, soltamos, y él nos dirá, nos va a decir si le duele más al apretar o al soltar. Al levantar. Al levantar. Bien, en el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las peritonitis agudas, como podemos... En el caso de las it would be a positive Blomberg sign. In addition to the Blomberg sign, there is another interesting maneuver located just uh, in the opposite part, in the left iliac fossa, where we will perform the deep palpation, which we later release. It will hold more when releasing in case of acute appendicitis, but the pain will be located in the right iliac fossa. Therefore, a Robsing sign is similar to Blumber sign, except that it is in the opposite side. The palpation will be performed on the side opposite to the area of pain, while the Blumberg palpation is performed on the side where the patient reports the pain. In both maneuvers, the most intense pain will be perceived in the injured area, the iliac, right iliac fossa. Another maneuver indicated in the diagnosis of acute appendicitis is the SOA-scope sign. We will ask the patient to raise the right lower limb and ask uh, whatever it hurts more, with the lower limb raised or not. In case of the acute appendicitis, more pain will be noticed when lifting the lower limb. This is due to the fact that psoas is a retroperitoneal muscle that uh, bulges when it contacts, pulling on the peritoneal layer and causing pain. In case of appendicitis, the left psoas maneuver, raising the left lower limb, will hurt in the right iliac fossa. There is uh, another maneuver, less interesting though, uh, which is uh, the shutter maneuver. The examiner performs this maneuver, flexing the patient's knee and uh, internally rotating the hip. Also in this case, uh, he will refer uh, to the pain in the right iliac fossa if there was appendicitis. This maneuver, however, is uh, less sensitive than the source maneuver. We now begin liver palpation. Uh, we can do it monomanually or bimanually. We can start the monomanual way from the right iliac fossa. In this case, we use our right hand and go up. We go up. 
And when we reach the coastal area, we ask the patient to breathe in, at which point we will generally find the hepatic ridge. Then we continue the exploration of epigastric area and the areas of the left hypochondrium through the entire length of the liver. There is another maneuver in the monomalonial palpation of the liver, called the spoon maneuver, in which we will uh, place the hand on the upper part and the fingers on the costal margin. Likewise, in the same position uh, with the maneuver of the metacarpophalangical joint, we will uh, tell the patient to breathe in. And indeed, at that point, the liver edge will hit our fingers. We continue this exploration towards the epigastric area. And subsequently to the left hypochondrium. We will look at the characteristics of the hepatic border in the existence of pain, and we can assess uh, in a certain way the characteristics of the hepatic surface, if it's smooth, rough, or any other abnormality. The manual palpation uh, of the liver can be carried out in several ways. We have a chaff out examination or rally. We will position one of the hands in the intersection area of the last two ribs with the lumbar muscle. Uh, we will push towards the upper part and palpate with the right hand, coinciding with the patient's inspiration. We will be able to notice the hepatic rim approximately two fingers wide below the costal margin. Another maneuver which is most uh, conveniently in fatty livers is what we know as the Gilbert maneuver. It consists uh, of from the upper area placing a left hand perpendicular to the costal margin and the right hand parallel to the costal margin so that the index and the middle fingers join them. In this way, we will palpate, making the progression towards the upper area. And we will find with the pads of the fingers of the left hand and the radial side of the index finger of the right hand, the hepatic rim. Another maneuver is the hook maneuver, the most used Matthew hook. With both hands, with the index hooked, also from upper area of the patient, We will explore rhythmically with the patient's respiratory movements. Muy bien. Otra vez. Te digo, los pulpejos paralelos al borde. With the pads parallel to the costal margin, the liver edge. Tanto el borde hepático como la superficie hepática.
y ahora vamos cura We now proceed with a specific maneuver for the exploration of the gallbladder. Voy a colocar We will place our right hand on the area of the left hypochondrium and costal areas and our left hand on the opposite area. When taking a breath, we will locate the gallbladder at the point with the both thumbs in the area lateral to the anterior rectus, approximately in the midclavicular line. With the Murphy maneuver, if pain were reported on inspiration, it would be a positive Murphy sign. This sign may show acute cholecystitis, secondary to the cholelithiasis or other processes. As we said before, as we explore with the Murphy maneuver, this uh, positive Murphy sign indicates cholelithiasis or cholecystitis. The palpation of the spleen has a fundamental maneuver that is a rally. First, we will place the patient in the intermediate lateral decupitus position towards the interior so that with our left hand placed in the posterior region, we will try to send the spleen, which is a, a very posterior position, to the anterior part. With our right hand, well from the top, where we will uh, palpate the lower edge of the spleen. Spleen can also be palpated by placing the right hand on the bottom and reaching up to touch the lower pole. With the palpation of the spleen, we finish this video of the physical examination of the abdomen. We hope it has been helpful and thank you very much for your attention.